Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. In this podcast we're going to look at some of the accounting entries that are needed for sole traders and partnerships. A sole trader is an entity which is owned by a single person and they record their transactions for the business separately from those that they would regard as in their personal life. So we separate the business entity off from your personal life. However, we should remind you that the assets of an owner of a business can still be at risk if it is a sole trader. similar thing applies to partnerships. Right, there are two sorts of entries that are going to affect a sole trader, which we're going to look at. Those are the inputs that they put into the business and any withdrawals that they make from the business. The input, or the investment into the business, is given a special name. We call it the capital. So you could say that capital is a record of what the business is worth, particularly when it starts up. And capital can be increased in a number of ways. Let's take a simple example. Heidi Bertha has been growing and selling plants. And it was a part-time activity, but she decides she wants to run a business growing and selling plants. In other words, she wants to make a living from a hobby. That's very often how sole traders start a business. So she starts this business, shoots a rising, and let's look at the transactions at the beginning. She deposits £9,000 for savings into a current or checking account, which she has opened in the name of the business. So the bank account gets debited with 9000 and the opposite entry for the double entry is a credit of 9000 to a capital account. So the asset of bank is debited because the business got an asset of cash now, and debits increase asset accounts, and the asset of capital is credited to represent the owner's interest. A credit increases an equity account. She also has a ban. She decides she's going to use this for her business, and she estimates the value is worth the value of the van is worth seven thousand eight hundred. So to make this as an entry, if the van now becomes an asset of the business, the motor vehicles account is debited with seven thousand eight hundred, and the capital account is deb- is credited with seven thousand eight hundred. So the total for the capital now is sixteen thousand eight hundred. So that represents what the business is worth at this point in time. <laughs> she then borrows £2,500 from her partner. She uses this to buy a large greenhouse. And she builds the greenhouse on land that she's renting from Jimmy Button. So if we look at this and look at the accounts, to record the greenhouse, we debit, say, a plant and equipment account with 2500 and we credit a loan account which is a liability account with two and a half thousand so the asset of plant and equipment has increased in value but there's also a liability of a loan that's increased by the same amount so although the assets of the business increase the capital or the equity does not increase the land is being rented and the land does not belong to the business and that's why we don't treat the land as an asset to the business Heidi has a successful first month, and at the end of that month she withdraws 1750 from the bank, which she's going to use for her own personal living expenses. In this case we debit a drawings account with the 1750 and credit the bank account with 1750 So the asset of cash decreases by 1750 and the drawings account is debited at 1750 Debiting a drawing account represents a decrease in what the business is worth because the asset of cash has been decreased without anything going into the business. So the drawings account is an equity account and again it re- the drawings represents particularly what the owner is taking from the business. So we now have two equity accounts. Drawings accounts and debiting a drawing account will decrease equity and we have capital accounts and crediting capital accounts increase equity. So those are the main things with sole traders. Right? They increase their capital by making credits to the capital account. They decrease the equity by making debits to the drawings account. Now what about partnerships? 
Partnerships are formed when two or more persons decide to trade together, and lawyers and estate agents often have firms that start in that way. There is at least one partner who must accept unlimited liability. So we're going to look at Glenn Flatt and Lynn Gale. They decide to form a partnership or go into partnership for a photography business. And we're going to look at how we record their contributions and also what happens to any profit. How do we record and divide that? Which means, of course, we also need to look at how their drawing is going to be treated. They start by drawing up a partnership agreement. All partnerships should have an agreement. The basis is that profit is going to be shared according to the initial investment. And they also have a clause which states that neither partner can make drawings without informing the other and that the drawings can't exceed the interest of that partner in the business. That's to stop the initial capital being reduced. So, Glenn Flatt's contribution, he puts in 5,000 cash, he gives his motor vehicle to the business, 15,000, he has photography equipment and printing equipment, and he donates these to the business as well. So all those things represent assets that he is going to put into the business. So if we look at that, the equipment account has a debit of 17,000, the motor vehicle has a debit of 15,000, the bank account a debit of 5,000, we add all those up, and the credit, in other words the capital for Glen Flat, is £37,000. So Glenn's contributed assets, which are recorded, the total of his contribution is then recorded in a capital account. So let's now consider Lynn Gale's contribution. Lynn has 8000 in cash, which she deposits in the bank account for the business, and she also puts in the premises that she owns, which are valued at 66000 So the entries are going to be 66000 for premises and buildings, 8000 into the bank account, and that's 74000 as a credit to the capital account for Lynn Gale. So, we have two capital accounts. There's a capital account for each partner. Now, supposing the partnership had 10 partners, could have anything up to 20. But if we recorded things in this manner, we could end up with 10 different capital accounts and 10 different drawing accounts. Well, how can we make this easier? For each partner, we need to have a record of what the original contribution to capital was. That's important in the profit distribution. That's part of the partnership agreement. We also need to have a record of monies that they take from the business and a record of how any profits are distributed, or indeed how any losses are distributed. So the increases and decreases for each partner we keep in current accounts, but we still record the original capital. So we're going to have two sets of accounts for each partner, a capital account and a current account. So the accounts are presented at the end of the year, in other words when we do our financial statement, we're only going to present one capital account and one current account, regardless of the number of partners, and that will be, if you like, a summary of the partner's accounts. So let's sum the initial contributions from Glenn and Lynn. In the premises there were 66,000, motor vehicles 15, equipment 17, bank account 13. Those are all the debits, those are all the assets. And the combined capital then of the business is a credit of 111,000. So that's what's going in the capital account. But we're going to show the accounts for the partners separately. We're showing that Glenn Flat has got capital of 37,000, Lynn Gale has capital of 74,000 and that's the balance on the accounts. Any profit or loss we're going to distribute according to the ratio of which they put their capital in, so it's going to be one part to Glenn Flat, two parts to Lynn Gale. Now, we distributed the profits in this way uh, because obviously that's the relationship of the amount of capital that they did and they have an agreement to take 20,000 each as partner salaries, that's like their drawings. So at the end of the first year of trading we have a net profit of 130,000 and each partner's got drawings of 20,000 and we then need to divide the remaining 90,000. Well, at one part to Glenn and two parts to Lynn, that should be fairly easy to work out. So, we can update the accounts for the end of the year. The capital accounts, we said, recorded the initial capital. They're going to remain unchanged. Nothing else has happened during the year. 
but the current accounts for each partner are now shown. Glenn's have got drawings of 20,000, his share of profit is 30,000, so if I subtract his drawings, he has a balance of 10,000 on his account. Lynn has drawings of 20,000, her share of the profit is 60,000, I subtract her drawings and she has a balance of 40,000 in her current account. I can summarise that here and you can see that what I've done is an appropriation account right at the end to show the net profit was 130,000 of which 40,000 went out as drawings or partner salaries, 90,000 was profit which was divided between the two partners. And on the statement of financial position then, under equity we will simply show those two accounts, the capital accounts with a balance of 111,000 and current accounts with a balance of 50,000. So some partnerships may have additional uh, features in their agreements. They may have interest to be paid on capital at the end of the year, and if that's paid in cash, then obviously it would decrease the current accounts. Interest could also be charged on drawings, that would also decrease the accounts, and commission could also be paid to partners. All of these, however, must be part of the partnership agreement. So that ends our short podcast on sole traders' entries and partnership entries, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors, and you can find us on Facebook, just look up Park Bench Tutors. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies.